Next, from Springfield, State Representative Chris Welch holds a press conference to discuss his bill that would restrict federal agents from arresting illegal immigrants at churches and schools and other public places. This runs about 20 minutes. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us here today to discuss House Bill 426, a bill which I will be presenting today in the House Human Services Committee at 3 o'clock in Room 118. House Bill 426 would establish protections for immigrants from Immigration and Customs Enforcement or agencies working with ICE. The goal of this legislation is simple. It is to protect people's rights from invasive actions by government. All of us, all of us must stand with those who feel that government is not fighting for them. It is good policy for Illinois to say to the rest of the world that we are a welcoming state. Illinois should be a welcoming place to those who are trying to make a better life for themselves. This bill does not require Illinois to become a sanctuary state. However, it acknowledges the fear of deportation many families face today and provides them with somewhere they can go to feel safe. Cities that are welcoming to immigrants and have similar policies see lower crime incidents, stronger economies, lower unemployment rates, and more benefits. While the bill does provide immigrant families with the protections they need, it also puts in place policies that will make our community stronger. As we try to find ways to move the state forward, common sense immigration policies like this need to be a part of the conversation. To those that, that do not understand why a black legislator is sponsoring this bill, I want to say to you today something that Pastor Martin Niemöller said long ago. First, they came for the socialists. And I didn't speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists. And I did not speak out because I wasn't a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews. And I did not speak out because I wasn't a Jew. But then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. So today, we speak up. We're speaking up today, we're speaking up tomorrow, and we're going to continue to fight for immigrant rights. We don't believe there should be a ban. We don't believe there should be a wall. We don't believe this country should be driven by fear, and we do not believe this country should be driven by hate. I am honored to be joined here with the folks that are standing with me today. And speaking up with me today are my colleagues, Representative Lisa Hernandez and Representative Teresa Ma. I will let them say a few words and then to be followed by Moni Ruiz Velasco from West Suburban Pazo and Itadel Shalabi from the Arab American Families. We're all speaking up for immigrants here today. Representative Hernandez. First, I want to start by thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Representative Chris Welch, for standing up with courage to introduce the Safe Zone legislation to give immigrants in Illinois who are our neighbors, friends, family, and constituents the protections to keep their families together. After the November election, the Trump victory and his hateful, divisive his rhetoric set off an immediate surge of fear across the country. The entire immigrant community, regardless of the legal status. It caused tragic and devastating actions in classrooms, businesses, and public space against individuals already reeling from feelings of hopelessness and dread for their families. The urgency to address these rising fears reported to members gave way to take action. 
Representative Chris Welch stepped up and took a stand. I immediately reached out to Representative Welch when I heard he had legislation that would establish safe zones. As he was explaining the bill to me, he paused and said, Lisa, why don't you take the bill? I declined, knowing the importance of his role as the leading sponsor. Although Latinos are the largest immigrant community in Illinois, we are far from the only ones. We live in a nation of immigrants who've crossed oceans and continents to call Illinois home. I'm grateful to you, Representative, for taking this stand in more ways than one, for taking a stand for what you believe in, for setting the tone that we all come from immigrant roots and that the Illinois General Assembly stands up to protect all residents, Illinois. Thank you again. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Teresa Ma, and I am a newly elected state representative representing a predominantly immigrant community uh, within the city of Chicago. And I'm extremely proud to be here standing with my colleagues to support a bill uh, that is truly, truly important uh, at this moment in our history. And um, I support legislation that is friendly to immigrants and protects immigrants and acknowledges the importance of immigrants to the strength of our country and the strength of our state here in Illinois. Uh, I have a very personal uh, family connection to uh, these issues. Um, my grandfather came to the United States in 1924 at a time when Chinese immigrants were legally excluded from entering the country through the Chinese, uh, Chinese Exclusion Act. And that act was passed at a time when there was no one to speak up for uh, Chinese immigrants or the uh, other Asian immigrants that were later added uh, to laws in this country that prevented their immigration. Um, so my grandfather uh, lived during a time when um, he could have been victimized and deported at any time. Um, yet he was among many, many immigrants who came to build this country. And so we have to acknowledge the history of this country, that it was built by immigrants, and uh, they continue to be valuable uh, assets to the strength of our country. Uh, we cannot allow an administration that uh, does not acknowledge that to make laws willy-nilly and, and um, you know, exclude people. Um, in, and in many cases, people who are legally uh, allowed to be in the United States. Uh, so because of the unpredictability of these executive orders and policies that uh, have been um, have, have been approved, um, you know, it is our obligation here in Illinois to do what we can to stabilize the economy, provide safe spaces for immigrants so that uh, we can continue to be a strong uh, state and, and that uh, we uh, fight against the possibility of families being ripped apart um, and uh, anything that will destabilize the economy and further the, the fear and uh, threat to uh, the fabric of our nation. So I'm proud to be here standing with my colleagues and with the broader community in support of this legislation. And I, I hope that, um, that uh, it will uh, pass uh, and signal where we stand here in Illinois um, against the instability and uh, senseless policies that are being promoted um, in this administration. Thank you. Moni Ru uh, Ruiz Velasco. 
Good afternoon. My name is Moni Ruiz Velasco. I am the executive director of PASO, the West Suburban Action Project, a social justice, advocacy, and legal services organization that serves the West Cook County. I think it's really important to see who's up here today. Uh, and I want to thank Representative Welch for really being a champion of this bill, and to Representative Ma and Representative Hernandez, who are also championing these issues uh, for our communities. Uh, we're here today to ensure that the Immigrant Safe Zones Act passes out of the House Services Committee. Uh, the bill would prohibit collaboration between immigration enforcement agencies and some of our most protected safe spaces, including schools, um, agencies, uh, health institutions, um, as well as places of worship if they choose to um, to partake in this bill. The bill is consistent with the longstanding law enforcement practices of immigration agencies that require immigration agents to prevent, um, to present themselves at sensitive locations, such as the ones uh, named in this bill. And it would not uh, violate any kind of laws in that people would continue, agents who present a valid warrant, uh, a valid legal warrant issued by a court would still be able to continue on with operations. No matter where we are on immigration, we want our children to feel safe at school. We want people to access life-saving and necessary medical service, and we want people to feel safe when they're attending religious services with their families. Passing this bill would allow and ensure our communities are safer and integrated. Passing this bill will ensure that certain communities are not racially profiled and targeted, and passing this bill will also ensure protection of U.S. constitutional principles. We should not be the type of country where children worry about whether they are safe at school, whether their parents are safe dropping them off at school, and whether their parents will pick them up after school. At a time when immigrant and Muslim communities are under unprecedented attack, we ask our representatives today to do the right thing, to listen to the strong community voices in support of this bill and these efforts. And we hope you will join us in ensuring that legislators pass a bill that protect all of us, especially the most vulnerable communities. Thank you. And Itadel Shalabi from Arab American Families. And then we'll take questions. Absolutely. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. And I just want to say this is what really democracy looks like. This is what really democracy looks like, the joining of forces. And it's such a heartwarming thing that this is the feeling I didn't think I had after 9-11. And I speak from personal experience, and as a co-founder and executive director of Arab American Family Services, we see the fears on our women's faces, we see the fears in our children's faces, we see the fears of uh, the husbands who go to work and want to come home but are afraid or worried will they be able to come home, and I see the difference between 9-11 and this with the support and the outreach of what truly America looks like. 9-11. Um, just to let you know, I had the FBI come knocking at my door and saying I was raising a terrorist for Hamas. And that fear of having someone as an, as an enforcement agency walking into your home, but knowing that I'm a citizen and my children are citizen, this is what I remember. And f hearing Moni talk about children worrying if their parents will pick them up, that breaks my heart. That breaks my heart of not only will they pick me up, but will be, be able to take them to the doctor and not have ICE, ag ICE agents coming in and invading that space. So this is really what we want, is that for everyone to look at and, and support, and we are asking our legislatures, what wonderful three legislatures we have amongst us, to be here and say we are supporting you and we really appreciate it. And we hope that all of the legislatures will sign on and make sure that before we go home that we are a safe zone for immigrants in the state of Illinois. Thank you. And I just want to say that we do have a number of other colleagues who have signed on to be champions of this legislation. Uh, the number of organizations that support this uh, initiative continue to grow, uh, and we look forward to presenting it in committee today. Uh, but for now, we'll, we'll open the floor up for questions if there are any. Our intention, uh, and we are going to be filing an amendment to the bill just to clarify uh, as it relates to places of worship, uh, that they will have the option uh, to opt in or out uh, because of issues of church and state. But it's our intention for schools and health facilities 
uh, that they do not have the option. They receive public monies, uh, and we believe we have the right as the state uh, uh, to mandate to people who receive public monies good public policy. And we believe that it is good public policy for schools and, and, and uh, health uh, places to be welcoming centers. We don't want people to be afraid to go to school like they were the day after the election. Getting calls in my office and hearing that students were crying uh, and needing to be counseled all day because of the rhetoric that they heard in the, the, the presidential campaign was quite disturbing. Uh, and we, I just believe schools and, and hospitals and clinics should be, uh, and we all believe, uh, should be safe zones. Does this piece of legislation bar them from entering the premises as well, or is it just the building itself? Well, it bars them from entering the premises without a valid warrant. If they have a valid warrant, that warrant's going to, they're going to be allowed to do whatever they have to do. Uh, school officials and hospital officials will stand down. If they don't have a valid officials, this law will say, come back when you have a valid warrant. So how uh, easy would it be for them to get a warrant? I mean, is there anything that would secure, uh, you know, anything that's further in terms of, like, you know, in case they decide they just want to all these warrants to be, like, bypass the bill? Well, I think that's the protection in the bill because there is a process in place, and our judges have the discretion uh, uh, experienced judges have the discretion to issue a warrant or not based on the information that is being sworn to and presented to them. If a valid warrant is presented at these places, we should uh, allow them to do their job. Uh, but if they're not able to get a valid warrant, they shouldn't be raiding a school and disrupting the learning environment. You know, I have small children, and the last thing I want them to see is law enforcement officials rushing into a school, arresting kids and putting them in handcuffs. And that's a, can you imagine the trauma that is upon schools? Uh, and and I, that's why I think this is such good public policy. Uh, there's a section in the bill that talks about removing file uh, information on students. So for example, for universities, universities ask their non-citizen students to submit uh, documentation that uh, them stating that they're not citizens. Will universities be expected to get rid of all these documentation that they have on file? Or Can we just address that? Um, so I think one of the things that's important is we want this bill to comply with all federal laws and by the universities removing information, not all information, but information about specific to immigration status. Um, that doesn't mean, and, and that's why it was very explicit in the bill about asking, for example, for you know, in-state tuition purposes or for scholarship purposes, but by removing that information from their records, then it, that will make sure that they're in compliance with all federal laws. You know, one of the things I want to mention is that I think we crafted a very tightly written bill to make sure we uh, ensured constitutional protections, but also granted additional protections under state law. Uh, and I, I think we've done that. Uh, I think we've uh, done a very good job of putting some policy forth that I believe other states will follow. Uh, and, and I'm just proud of, of what we can come up with when we all work together. Any other questions? Well, thank you all. You're welcome to join us in committee at 3 o'clock. Thank you so much. You're watching the Illinois Channel.